you brought in a ringer. You brought in a ringer. Uh, I beat all the regular contestants. And then you bring in this ringer that it held a 213% quota at Yelp. Like, that's some bullshit. <laughs> so, so I'm going to bring as much razzle-dazzle as I can here today. Those first, call it three to five customers, are critical. Um, we, like to, we like to challenge the company to go out and find the best possible folks in that, in that ICP, the best logos. Um, and while revenue is important, um, in the early days, we prioritize product feedback um, and quality of customer logo over revenue because um, it can be instrumental to setting the company up for success down the road. The scenario is uh, you're a recently funded company with Series A dollars. Um, it's, it's, it's a B2B enterprise SaaS company. You've got about 50 employees of which 20 or so are on the go-to-market team. They're made up of 10 SDRs, 12 AEs, a couple, four customer success, customer account managers, and one RevOps person who's got a really fun job trying to wrangle everything. Um, for the purposes of the scenario, we're gonna assume half is inbound, half is outbound. Um, 20K CVs and 30 day sales cycles. Um, lots of volume with top of funnel. Um, so the challenge that we'd like to pose to you guys is based on this scenario and this company, what are the seven top pieces of software that you would leverage to ensure continued success of this company? Uh, I wanna score the market for that ICP by pain. So I'm gonna be using People Data Labs and Harmonic.ai. Uh, uh, where instead of being charged uh, sort of uh, transactionally every time I want to look up a domain, I'm going to look at a bunch of different models about what makes companies really right for us so I can define the sandbox. Once I've defined the sandbox of which market we should go after, and that's 100% of the companies scored by pain, um, then I'm going to use tools like reply.io um, to take that research and automate outbound email. Um, I'm going to use tools like SayPrimer.com to be able to uh, match my email ad audiences with paid channels so that my sales team will only go into conversation af after people have seen ads. I'm going to use um, an agency like Right Percent for B2B ads um, so we can uh, have someone that actually can run those channels because this company didn't seem to have an internal marketing um, uh, set up, so it's going to be easier to get an agency involved. Um, if they have 50% organic, I want to lean into that and improve the funnel. So I'm going to use tools like Clearbit Reveal and a probably a Drift competitor to save money here. Um, uh, so I can build targeted chatbots and understand who's coming to the website so I can really supercharge those funnels. Um, Amazing stack. Um, and, I, and I appreciate the fact that you made the assumption that the company's already gotten the gotten the blocking and tackling done, have the basics up, the CRMs, the Slacks, the Zooms. Um, you know, a couple things that I didn't hear um, that I would have thought um, would come into play and that I think can be valuable. Um, you know, I didn't hear anything about sort of sales intelligence. I didn't hear about the gongs or the choruses of the world. And, and I know they're expensive. Um, but there are other companies out there who do this and you again you could go to the agency model and um bring in you know sales training executives but you know when you're looking at 10 sdrs and 12 aes there there may be there may not be enough um there may not be enough information in just the numbers themselves to tell you you know where performance is and and which ones you can up level and coach and which ones you need to manage out of the organization so maybe i could just kind of throw that out there. Would love either of your commentary on where sort of sales intelligence fits.